Welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is Puppeteer full tutorial series for absolute beginners. In the last episode, I started with the basic introduction of the Puppeteer framework. We learnt about the capabilities of Puppeteer and what all we can use Puppeteer for. Some of the classic examples are for web scrapping, data collection, automation testing, or even extracting data from websites, or much more. Today, we are going to focus on installing Puppeteer in our local and then we'll write some basic code to, to make sure that we have everything set up to start writing our advanced use cases. Following is the entire um, tutorial playlist that I'll be covering. So I've created the index before so that you have um, already in place what all you're going to learn and you can focus on the areas that you're interested in. If you're a beginner, I will encourage you to go each uh, sequentially and so that you can learn and master Puppeteer with me. Today we are doing installation. Going forward, I have planned 25 uh, episodes including some advanced projects and use cases. Alright, so today we are going to do installation. <coughs> so we will be doing this in five steps. Okay, the first and foremost is to verify that you have Node.js installed in your machine. That's absolutely imp uh, important without which we cannot work. When working with Node.js, make sure that you have close to current version because most of these frameworks, they tend to depend on the latest versions, right? So that there is no issue with patching, etc. So let's say you're in Node 14 or 16, <coughs> probably uh, the latest version of Puppeteer should work for you. So let's check in my system what we are going to use and then I'll show you so I am using node version 14. Okay, so that should be fine for me. So I'll probably go one level down of the puppeteer, which is almost similar. Okay, so based on your version, you will have to choose uh, which version of puppeteer you will work with. If you are having any issues with installing or having any issue, please let me know in the comment section. I'll be more than happy to help you get started. <coughs> All right, so the next step is we'll create a new project, right? And then we will initialize the NPM will type npm in it and then finally we'll do a install of puppeteer using npm install puppeteer finally we'll write some code to make sure that everything is set up in terms of puppeteer is installed and we'll do write a simple code to check the um, authenticity of it that being said enough of talking let's be get back to code <coughs> so i'll create a folder first and whenever you create folders right uh, important thing is never give the same name as the package okay so if i create a folder by the name puppeteer i will have issues because i cannot install with the same dependency so i'm going to say puppeteer tutorial okay so let's navigate to that it's in learning slash puppeteer tutorial okay now i'm going to initialize my repo and, and say npm in it i'm not giving anything for now i'm just hit enter 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 it will create the basic package.json which we can change anytime whenever we want okay all right so that being said now i'm going to do npm install puppeteer okay the latest version of puppeteer while recording this tutorial is 20 but i'm going to go at 11.19.11.0 one level down uh, because my node version is not current mine is 14 the current version right now is 16 point something i believe so i have installed puppeteer 19.11 and that works for me all right it, there is not not much changes between 20 and 19 as such all right so i have installed puppeteer you can see the instance got added in our package.json all right all set now we are good to start coding okay so i'm going to create a file and i'm going to call it index.js <coughs> right now this is a js file uh, you can add any um, you know uh, name of the file that you would like in it but i prefer to have it a simple way index right that's the usually the starting point of any uh, application that being said i'll quickly write some code to show you the basic and make sure that everything is set up and readily working so i'm going to import the puppeteer library the first uh, i'm saying in import the puppeteer by saying require and i will write an async right and usually whenever i write async the first thing i try to do is write the 
try catch uh, exception that's something that has helped me a lot in making sure my code is uh, readable and it's much better right so try catch block whenever you use async always uh, try to add that uh, async kind of a try catch thing so here i'll print the error whenever so in the try i'm going to create a new new instance of browser using the puppeteer and i'm going to say dot launch that's an inbuilt method inside puppeteer library what it would do is it will launch the browser and i am going to say that for the sake of this tutorial just to check if everything is working i'm going to say headless as false that means i want to see the browser opened <coughs> then what i'm going to do is create a new instance and say page equal to await and use browser instance and i'm going to then say there is a method which says new page okay this again that's a new syntax but I, I would prefer writing simple code so here I'm saying open a new page uh, using the browser instance and then again await and we will say page dot now this has multiple things that are covered inside it okay so here we are saying constant page await page dot go to and this you can see it takes a URL string that means which URL it has to go so I'm saying for now just go to google.com and once you go there what it needs to do right so let's say we need to take a screenshot of that particular page so I'm going to say page dot screen shot so this again we can pass some options so I'm just going to say path is same and save it by the name google.png simplest use case I can show you await now browser dot close will close the browser all right that's it <coughs> that's all we will need for today okay nothing fancy just simple what we are doing we are telling puppeteer to launch the browser and capture that instance using the browser instance we are telling open a new page that means open a new window and then in that navigate to page dot go to that is go to that URL which is HTTPS google.com and then screenshot that particular page and then close the browser and that's the minimum bare minimum code you can write to run puppeteer okay so it looks good now to run you will write node and then followed by the file name dot js whatever file name you have given okay that should be the simplest check that we can do so it says browser dot new page is not a function let's see it opened so let's see why some error happened let me quickly debug now it says await and okay because we need to await here for the puppeteer to launch the all right so now you can see it's opening a chromium here it is opening google.com it took a screenshot here you can see it took a screenshot and then it closed the browser right so by default you need to write await method so that you have to wait for each of these methods to be completed since I did not I write this it gave me the error see again it will give an error because it will immediately come to the next uh, method so that being said our basic puppeteer code is ready our installation is successful and we are able to launch you can see it's not in really headless mode because I wrote it false I can see the browser open it opens google.com it takes a screenshot and it closes the browser so far so good this concludes our episode number two just the basic steps you need to even start working with puppeteer okay i hope you are able to get the output if not please let me know in the comment section i'm here to help you as much as i can to get you started with puppeteer thank you so much for joining i hope you're enjoying this series in the next episode we will write some basic web scrapping that's uh, mostly like 
pulling out data from an existing website or pages and much much more it's fun it's one of the cool libraries that you should learn especially if you're working anywhere on the automation side of uh, projects thank you so much for joining see you in the next episode